Pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, adequate notice of this meeting was forwarded to the official Township newspapers posted on the Bulletin Board and Township website on November 3rd, 2022. This meeting is being videotaped and will be on Channel 9. Roll call, please. Mr. Doyle? Here. Mrs. Flayne? Here. Mr. Key? Here. Mr. Mark? Here. Mayor Brigham? Here. We have a motion over the first public portion for resolutions and ordinances below. Motion for the first public portion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Your motion to close the first public portion. Motion to close the first public portion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion to approve correspondence and reports. Make a motion to approve the correspondence and reports. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to approve the minutes from December 27, 2022 and January 2nd, 2023. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion to approve the bill list. Make a motion to approve the bill list. Second. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Key? Yes. Mr. Mark? Yes. Mayor Brigham? Yes. I get a motion to approve the raffle of the, of the just licenses, Barbara? Yes. It's the food handling. Food handling licenses for 2023? Make a motion to approve the licenses. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution, resolution R3123, supporting the preferred preliminary alternate alternative for Porchtown Road, County Road 613, bridge over still run at Iona Lake, bridge 10K4 in the Township of Franklin. Make a motion for the resolution R3123. Second. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Blaine? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mayor Burnham? Yes. Resolution 20, uh, 3223, reappointing John J. Romano Jr. as Municipal Court Judge for the Township of Franklin, joint Municipal Court for a three year term. Make a motion for R, 3223. Second. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Blaine? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mayor Brigham? Yes. Resolution 3323, appointing the mayor and or his designee to apply for a recreation grant. Make a motion for R, 3323. Second. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Blaine? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mayor Brand? Yes. Resolution 3423, reappointing Michael Bozart as a Class 3 School Resource Officer for the Township of Franklin Police Department. Make a motion for R, 3423. Second. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Blaine? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mayor Brand? Yes. Resolution 3523. Reappointing Brian Farrell as a Class 3 re School Resource Officer for the Township of Franklin Police Department. Thank you for R3523. Second. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Blaine? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mayor Brigham? Yes. Resolution 3623, reappointing Larry Holcraft as a Class 3 School Resource Officer for the Township of Franklin Police Department. Thank you for R3623. Second. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Blaine? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mayor Brennan? Yes. Resolution 3723, reappointing Jesse Miller as a SLEO Class 2 Officer for the Township of Franklin Police Department. Thank you, Mr. R. 3723. Second. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Blaine? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mayor Brennan? Yes. Resolution 3823, reappointing Vince Driver as a Class 3 School Resource Officer for the Township of Franklin Police Department. Make a motion for R, 3823. <coughs> Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Flame? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mayor Brennan? Yes. Resolution 3923, authorizing the Chief Finance Officer of the Township of Franklin to transfer certain from certain funds from and to specific accounts in the 2022 reserve budget for the Township of Franklin. Make a motion for R3923. Mm. Second. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Blaine? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Marsh? <coughs> Mayor Brown? Yes. 
Resolution 4023, authorizing temporary hiring of senior bus driver, alternate Christina Biddle. Make a motion for R, 4023. Second. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Lane? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mayor Burton? Yes. Resolution 4123, authorizing the title change of Stephanie Garofalo, from administrative assistant clerk to construction clerk of probation. Make a motion for R, 4123. Second. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Lane? Yes. Mr. Keene? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mayor Bridge? Yes. Um, carry the motion for the introduction of the following ordinance. The public hearing will be held on January 24th, 2023. Ordinance 123 establishing the salary and wages of municipal officials and employees of the Township of Franklin. Make a motion for the introduction of the 0123. Second. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mr. Slade? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mayor Brown? Yes. Can I get a motion for the introduction of 0223 authorizing the statutory fee increase for applicants for permit to carry firearms submitted to the Township of Friends and Police Department? I make a motion for 0223. Second. Mr. Doyle? Yes. Mrs. Slade? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mayor Brown? Yes. And both of these will be January 24th. 2023, correct, ma'am? Yes, public hearing on the 24th. Thank you. I get a motion to open the second public portion for any comments. Make a motion to open the second public portion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Is this the public portion where you can talk about any issue? Yes. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk again about um, land use development. And I wanted to remind everyone that the uh, municipal land use law is basically, the purpose of it is to encourage municipal action to guide the appropriate use or development of all lands in this state in a manner which will promote public health, safety, morals, and general welfare to provide adequate light, air, and open space, uh, appropriate population densities and concentration, contribute to well-being of persons, neighborhoods, communities, and regions, and preservation of the environment. I think we, we can't forget that the job of zoning, planning, is to make sure we have a healthy population. And that's the big concern that I have with the redevelopment zone, that unfortunately, or fortunately, there's a lot of homes in the area, and we can't change that. So placing an extra burden on them is a difficult thing that I don't think we should be doing based on the type of burden that could be there. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think warehousing is probably where we're headed. and. Diesel trucks emit 50% more nanoparticles of pollution, and these are very dangerous to people's health. They not only go into your lungs, but they're so small they grow right into your bloodstream. And then they cause all kinds of serious health complications, including premature death. So I wanted to go over the criteria for areas in need of redevelopment. And I believe the criteria, there are three, one is land that owned by municipality, the county, a local housing authority, redevelopment entity, or unimproved vacant land that has remained so for a period of 10 years prior to adoption of the resolution, that by reason of its location, remoteness, lack of means of access to developed sections or portions of the municipality, or topography, or nature of the soil, is not likely to be developed through the instrumentality of private capital. Well, I don't think any of those things apply to these lots. They're certainly close enough to other development, and they're not really remote. They're certainly able to be developed without, do, they, through instrumentality of private capital. They could easily be developed. Now, the other parts that they're citing is building arrangement, which we sort of covered that, that there was a mistake in that part with the uh, Mangini's property. And none of the land there presents a combination of detriment to the safety, health, morals, or welfare to the community, which seems to be a caveat in all the reasons why you would make 
you know, it would qualify for redevelopment zone. If anything, putting a warehouse there is a detriment to the safety, health, morals, or welfare of the community, rather than what's there now. So I really don't think that it meets the legal criteria. And I wanted to talk about the effects of what will happen. I mean, it will increase the risk of cardiac and pulmonary mortality, strokes, heart attacks. It's clear the science is there. It's not some kind of abstract issue. Children who are living within 250 yards of a highway are also found to have problems with leukemia and other childhood cancers. It also affects older people as well. And even short-term exposure can kill. So we are talking about something that's not abstract. And part of the problem that I have with all of this is that we really have to factor the health of our residents in anything that we plan. And if these particles can cause everything from cancer to early death, chronic lung disease, asthma, they also found that they also cause problems with the immune system so that individuals who have now will have susceptibility to a bacterium called Streptococcus pneumonia. Now this is a, a bacteria that's found in everybody's nose, but people who are exposed to diesel exhaust particles have an increased susceptibility where these particles that normally these disease um, bacteria that normally wouldn't hurt you because they're in your in your body all the time and you have a good immune system, but being exposed to diesel exhaust particles causes you to be susceptible if you're under five years old or elderly, and a lot of people that's what it's a life threatening disease. So thank you. Hi, good evening. Chris Sayers, 184 Malaga Lake Boulevard. <clears throat> First off, congratulations to the two new committee members. Um, welcome. I hope you I hope you uh, enjoy your term here. Um, I just wanted to. My main reason to come. I don't want to belabor the point about the redevelopment zone. Um, so my main purpose here tonight I don't want to just keep speaking just for the sake of speaking um, is just introducing myself to the two new committee members because I know you weren't necessarily you weren't on the committee during the last uh, committee meeting when we this was discussed or at least the last one that I was here for um, it was suggested uh, by some on the planning board that the people who are complaining the loudest voices that are complaining against the redevelopment are a minority voice in the township um, people who are just anti-business or environmentalists or or what have you that, that we said the no 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 so you shouldn't say that right uh, well mr you, pet you just, you just said that it's the opinion of people on there that allows no one ever said that mr pesh came up here during the last uh committee meeting and told the new committee members and suggested that there are loud voices in the community and they make up a minority of the people. So I said there were people on the planning board, not at the planning meeting. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bruno. Um, I just wanted to say that this is going on not just in Franklin Township, it's going on all over the state. And in every township where these new warehouses have been proposed, there has been a strong and organized effort to stop this warehouse construction. I, I have news articles here that I printed out. Hillsboro Township, West Hampton Township, Burlington County, Sparta, Franklin, Somerset County, sorry, uh, Mullica Hill, right down the street, probably the most uh, well known of all of them. And I just wanted to, you know, this is going on all over. And there is a large amount of people who are voicing their concerns against these warehouses. And again, it's not a right or left issue. I'm a Republican. I'm as conservative as they come. Um, I volunteered and voted for many of you up there on the on the, the board and i mean it's not a left or right issue it's I, I i please don't see it that way even state senator edward durr just uh tweeted out in december 
Uh, he said that many warehouses are being proposed across South Jersey and throughout the state. Logistically, it doesn't make sense. And many residents are voicing their concerns. Hashtag we the people. Somebody followed that up with a question saying, why are they building these warehouses? And he replied, this is a very good question and I'm hoping to find out. There are at least five warehouses being brought to planning boards in the past few weeks and none are in logistical, logical, I'm sorry, locations. So again, I mean, it's not a left or right issue. It's not an environmental Greenpeace issue. It's not uh, an economic issue. It's, 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 a, it's a issue that affects everybody in the township. And uh, it's an issue that I hope you uh, think hard and long about. And uh, I, I hope that in the end, you'll come against, uh, you'll vote against this redevelopment. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dave Marshall, 67 New Road, Malaga. Uh, and this is not a bragging point, but it's just to show you a vested interest in the township. My family's been here since 1940. Uh, I've coached many years in this township. I played sports all through youth, through high school. Uh, we have a, a, a definite love of the township, and this is a problem that's going to occur if this continues down this path. I'm not anti-business, I just think this is the wrong choice. I've spoke before uh, at different meetings about different businesses, one of which unfortunately I couldn't make at, but I have spoke to people off record about was the, the multitude of dollar stores coming in. Uh, everybody has their different opinion on them. I'm not saying I don't use them on occasion, we do. But they're an eyesore. The properties are kept like a sty and no one enforces it. There's trash all over, the lights flicker on and off, they have trucks idling all night long. I don't mean this in a sarcastic way, but where are you? I mean, they're approved to be here, but nobody enforces any of the things that should be done to help the public. And that's another problem with this. <laughs> multiple times. It's been through the township multiple times. Emails have been sent. This is in the past. I haven't done anything probably in the last year. We had some issues. We didn't have this other problem for a while. We had a hard time. I understand that. We have the one over side of Clucci's property. That, that's the main one. They, they all have the same issue. That's the worst. I know she's been out there. That's the worst one. Yeah. Uh, and that's the one, of course, that's closest to where I'm at, so you see it the most. I mean, it's we have trash on our property constantly from them just, it's just stuff blowing around. Fortunately, there's nobody right near us that has any seizure issues because the lights are flickering on and off so much, so long during the night, it would cause a seizure. Wait, the parking lot, the lights are just constant flickering. This is the, the one right there where Cluchy Lumber used to be on Delcy Drive. Uh, no, no, the, the other one I'm not aware of. I mean, I'm not, I know there's trash here because I've seen it when I've driven past, but not to the level of this one. Uh, yeah. And that's just one of the concerns. I mean, you drive up and down Deshi Drive. I know it's been brought to the attention before of, of previous boards. Uh, we have a lot of delinquent buildings. We have a lot of businesses that are unkept. Maybe we should focus a little bit more on the problems we have and making this township better before we start adding any more problems. That's, that's just a viewpoint. This process seems to be getting rushed through a lot. And I'm not saying there isn't favoritism going on. I, I don't know any of that. I'm not accusing that. It just seems suspicious. Whether it's something to do with the, the Fazio side, whether it's Mr. Roan, whether it's somebody on this board, I don't know. And I'm, like I said, it's not an accusation. One of the things that just came, I just noticed recently is with the Fazio property, it's, it's been up for sale for on and off for a while. You can look at almost any of the real estate pages and see it. It, it, it. That too. January of this year, it was listed for $2,980,000. That was on the 27th of January. The 28th, it went up to $8,500,000. 11 months later, it's listed for 9400000 which is their prerogative, except that if you read the website, it states the reason they went up to this and they're selling it now is because the, <laughs> and this, I can quote this, this is right from their website, according to the Franklin Township Zoning Officer, this property is being redeveloped. This is before even the public knew about it, it was posted on their website. How'd that happen? Is it leaked information? Is it insider information? Uh, I'm just. I, I understand, but this is on their site that was posted before any of us knew about this. When, when was that? It's well, now it's on there now, but you can look back. When was it? It's uh, originally the fir the first posting on it was back about four months ago. I, and I don't know the exact date. I know we didn't. At least most of us, in, I'll at least speak for myself, didn't wasn't aware of it till recently. You know, I told it right before the last public meeting. In fact, when we were at that meeting is when it got posted on the website during the meeting. Now, there may have been information before that, but it wasn't, the public wasn't aware of it, at least that I know of. And that, 
raises a lot of suspicion. Transparency is one of the biggest things you want. In fact, one of the quotes when a, a couple of you were running was, thank you for sending a message to the county political bosses that Franklin is not for sale. The residents of Franklin can see through all their typical attempts to take control of our town and Franklin should be first. That was part of the, the statements when two of you were running this year, or actually, you know, before your previous election, not this year, excuse me, uh, the slogans. Uh, Franklin's first, let's make Franklin first. First, let's make it happen with the people that are here. Something that I, I didn't hear about, maybe it has been, I, unfortunately I missed one of the meetings. Was there any type of impact studies done for this prior to any of this possible rezoning? Environmental, municipal costs, anything that way. Were anything anything done that way? Because it should have been. I'm, I'm asking because I don't know. I mean, maybe you can educate me. Matt, is that? No, the, the, again, this was referred for study to be considered for redevelopment. So the, those studies would, would be done wouldn't be done at that time there. It's a study that I understand that, but my question is, if the impact studies weren't done, we I, at least I have never got a clear answer why we were proceeding with this to start with. I, I've heard that it happened through here, but why? If there, if there wasn't an actual valid reason for it, is it chasing rateables? I'm just curious. Again, the process is, is uh, underway at this point. The, the study is being, it, it has been done for, for the redevelopment consideration. We are awaiting a response from the planning board at this time, after which time uh, the governing body would, would determine whether or not to proceed. All right, but it still doesn't answer the question of why we're even going here. Right. Well, again, it's a process. I, I understand that, but what's, here, what, I, it, I, it, I don't it, wake it, up in the morning and say, I want to restructure my property. Mm -hmm. I don't want to rezone it. What is the reason why we're going here? What is, I've never heard that. The reason why we're doing it? Yes to attract business potentially to the corridor. Okay, which I'm not anti-business, I'm, I'm good with that, but why this type? Why what type? We don't even know, we, we, there is no type. There is no type. Okay. It's zoned a certain way now, we just want to see what, what is available with the zoning after the planning board does whatever they do, if it's brought back to us, then we'll make a determination. And then I believe the next part is what, Matt? First of all, just to go back, the October 25th is when the governing body took formal action to refer the matter to the planning board for study. So, so from October, that was the, 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 the date that there was formal action taken at one of our public meetings. After the matter comes back from the planning board, the governing body, the, the planning board had an opportunity to review this. They, they, they haven't responded back to us yet. The governing body has seen fit not to act until that response is relieved, even though there's a statutory limit on how long they have. So there is no rush to do anything. In fact, the governing body has waited for that feedback and, are st and we are still waiting for it. After that feedback comes back, it is then a governing body decision as to whether or not to de declare the areas, the area in need and to then after that, if that de declaration is made, and of course, the study area that has been studied is, is being reviewed by the planning board. We will, we will have the benefit of their comments and take action if seen fit from there with inclu including that, that feedback. And after that, if it were determined, now we're, getting, we're three steps ahead, is that a, a plan, a redevelopment plan is crafted, one which addresses the issues that are being raised here tonight. Those issues won't be vetted unless and until a determination is made to proceed. Because that those 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 studies, those determinations are uh, cost money and cost time of, of the governing body. If if there's no determination to proceed, that would be costs that would be would not be recovered. So that, that's where we are in the process at this point. We we had recommended as the statute requires to the planning board to study, the planning board study we are now awaiting their comments and, and before proceeding. All right, now I'm, I know I'm out of my time. Is it a problem if I continue talking? It's five minutes. I, I understand that. I can sit down and get back up. I mean, that's fine. You really can't. Go ahead and finish. Right. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. What? You speak for real. That's, that's crazy. Well, it's, I'm just trying to stay within my limits. I only let that five minutes, that's it. Get out. In in the event it is a warehouse that comes in, and then say we say hypothetically that's what occurs. 
statistically only 11 percent of local residents are ever hired in a warehouse we already have almost every business in franklin township looking for help what do you think is going to happen when they come in say it is a warehouse where are they going to draw their employees from you look at the ones in Mulligan Hill, that was already proposed in the study was done. It was going to come from Camden and Philadelphia. We already have a severe drug issue in our town. In the event, and I'm not saying it's going to happen, it's just hypothetical, but say it is a lot of Camden employees that come down. Is it or is it not going to impact the drug problem? Is it going to make it worse? Is it going to make it better? Is it going to overburden the, the police officers? Um, again, these are things just to think about that may or may not. I know we have a retired police officer there. My father was a police officer in the 60s for this township. So I understand a little bit of that side before it wasn't as near like it is now. I, I could only imagine the nightmare they deal with. Do you want to add to that? And again, that's if it ends up being that. Water runoff is a big issue. Since that Fazio lot's been cleared, septics in this area have been going statistically failing. At least from what I'm hearing of the companies that are doing septics, they're up about 28% in their business, most of them. Is it anything to do with the lot clearing? I don't know. Our septic went bad after that. Again, it could be just age. The trees are dying in this area, and from what I'm hearing of some of the arborists, it's because of water saturation. The water tables are rising. If, if it ends up being a warehouse, say it's an 800,000 square foot building, just a building, no property, a one inch of rain will get 440,000 gallons of water runoff. Where's it going to go? Even if they put a detention pond in that it can seep back in the ground, it still raises the perk area of the water. It's an issue. The wetlands are already spreading. You just look down Delcy Drive over the high tension lines are and tell me that what I mean 20 years ago that was 15 feet wide with a little bit of dampness. Now it's over 150 foot wide and every tree along it is dying. It's just because the water tables are higher. It's just that's a statistic in South Jersey. What is this going to do to our property values? I live very close to this. The noise is horrendous now since they cleared these trees. We barely heard 55 before. Since the trees are down now, it's constant. It's not just winter, it's summer, it's all the time. The noise is, is horrendous. It's not when somebody's hitting a rumble strip, it's just from normal traffic now. We never heard it. We didn't move there for that reason. We liked it because it was nice and quiet. <clears throat> Air pollution was brought up a little bit. I believe it was by Barbara. She's very accurate with it. The, the diesel myth that was better than gasoline has been dispelled about five years ago and they, they're showing the statistics of that. There's health issues all the time now. Uh, I'm not going to rehash it because she went over most of them of what the side effects are. In the event they're idling, the more traffic, whatever it may be, it's going to affect our area. It's going to hurt. Again, you said it may not be warehouses. Maybe a professional building would be better, office building, something that doesn't have that amount of impact on the environment, whether it be water runoff, whether it be impact of the animals or the pollution side of it. Uh, most of which, uh, the other things I was going to go over have been hashed about. The, the biggest thing I'm concerned about, and I was hoping I voted for some of you, that we'd have more transparency in this township, and it doesn't seem like we do. That's right. And it's, it's sad. That's right. It's sad. I, I just, uh, it, it bothers me, as you can see from the people here, and everybody else should talk to has the same issue. We, we vote locals in, hoping that we'll be able to have that input and be part of this township. And we want you to be. You're here. Work with us. Talk with us. Let us know things. Don't let us find out last minute. Excuse me. I understand that. We appreciate it. The ones, that, the ones of us that are here. But I mean, this isn't a one thing. This is a long process. More important, just looking at. It. We're not even starting the process. Well, it sort of seems like it started now. <laughs> we, we did a study. Right, a study. Right, but it's still it's it's, it's started, isn't it? And then they put the article out afterwards. It's and like I said, from at least from a public standpoint, it sure seems like it's been started you know and like i said that's why we're here to find out more and i'm hoping i'm wrong but it's a concern i mean there's just there's a lot you look all on 55 there's properties being cleared i mean a lot of them are owned by people in the township maybe they were proactive maybe they're not maybe some of you own it i don't know but it sure looks like there's a, a plan in place to, to do this and there's going to be some financial benefit for people and it's it's if it's going to impact us we're going to talk about it and if there's not transparency you can be darn sure there's going to be accountability Thank you. Thank you. William Smith, 86 Woodland Avenue, Franklinville. <clears throat> I am neither for nor against it. However, I was born and raised in Franklin Township many, many years ago, and I am older than some and younger than some. They ran General Motors out of Franklin Township that wanted to build a car plant 
where Corollas is now, all the way to Delcy, all the way to Blackwood Town Route. Ran them out of town. They ran Fazio's out of town that wanted to put a business in there and a home. Said they couldn't cut the trees down. Well, guess what? The trees are down. You can't have it both ways. Either your taxes are going to go sky high or you're going to allow business in here. And like I said, I'm neither for nor against it. But you can't have it both ways. My taxes are almost $6,000 on a three-bedroom house on the end of Woodland Avenue next to what was a junkyard that buried trash and gas tanks and everything else in the ground. And the county let them get away with it. That's all I got to say. This township will never change. I am 70, I'll be 76 in April. This township will never change. They don't want business here. I don't know why, but you know, that's their privilege. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get a motion to close the second public portion? Make a motion to close the second public portion. Oh, I'm sorry. Stand by. Sorry, finishing growing a pair. Um, <laughs> I'm going to read it because I'm new to this. Yeah, sorry. Um, <clears throat> Hi, uh, I'm Mindy Curran, 70 Wood, Edgewood Avenue. Uh, I'm here to express my concerns over the redevelopment zone and corresponding study, and especially the areas considered greenways. When asked why these areas were added, there was not a definitive answer bordering on dismissive. I would like to have more confidence in the committee's ability to make serious, well-considered decisions about our quality of life. I moved here at the end of 2007 when it was fairly quiet, especially at night or when the neighbors were at work. But ever since Fazio land was cleared, the road noise that was buffered by the woods is now at a disquieting volume. I have invested myself into creating a wildlife habitat on my property, and I can tell you that there has been a dramatic decline in the amount of bugs and birds over the last several years. I can't say that it is because of that land clearing, but every tree that was removed was a host for a myriad of insects that would have fed many birds and critters that rely on them. The continuation of habitat loss is alarming, and as a community, I feel we should cherish what we have. Not all land is for human consumption and profit. I implore you to preserve the remaining untouched land we have and waterways, which make up 67 miles of streams and 350 acres of lakes and ponds. These areas are crucial to the health of this community and those downstream. I ask that you stay loyal to the master plan and retain the rural character of life in Franklin Township. As Joni Mitchell said, don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone. They paved paradise and put up a parking lot. They took all the trees and put them in a tree museum and charged all the people a dollar and a half to see them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. <clears throat> Good evening. 66 New Road. Um, What's your name? Matthew. Matthew. Yeah, Matthew Platania. Um, I just want to remind all of you that you are, you know, responsible for your own integrity, your own morals, and your decisions prove that. So going forward with anything that happens in this township, I want you to remind yourselves of that. Um, I also would like to know if you can possibly paint the lines on Marshall Mill Road. We, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! So it's, it's amazing. There hasn't been a head-on collision. Listen, there's Marshallville parts of Duck. Oh, I know. Parts of yeah, it's very bad. Yeah. Um, 
and to that point about like that property uh, by 55, um, why can it never be built into something productive for the community? It's private property. Private property, indeed. We don't, we don't own it, so the owners will be responsible for it. Can you guys possibly build a sound wall at all? Is the township in charge of that property between 55? Is the township involved in that property around 55? Sorry. Which property? Uh, I mean, like uh, right on 55 right there, right on the property in question. Can you guys build a sound wall at all? That would be the state. Yeah. That would, that's the state too, because of the highway? Yeah. All right. There's only a small piece of township property in the redevelopment plan. Okay. You're all being watched. <laughs> so choose wisely. I was wondering if Mr. Marsh and Mr. Keene are going to vote on this also. They're brand new on this. And from what Margaret Durr, uh, I live in uh, Forest Grove. You're wondering if they're going to vote? Yeah, are they going to vote? In other words, uh, from what I understand, um, it looks like that you can completely overlook what the planning board decides and you alone will make the decision. That's correct. And that means that we have two new members and they're going to make this decision about <coughs> it's a beautiful Mr. Marsh or Mr. Keene, but I'm sure that they will do their due diligence make a determination when the time comes. Yeah. They are residents. I mean, they live here. You know? Do they, does anybody live in the area of concern here? Nope. Does anybody? Nope. Have you been there? Uh, they love their neighborhood. <laughs> it's a beautiful area. And you're going to destroy it. The traffic it to come out from onto Route 40. It took it took a long time to be able to pull out. We already have a lot of traffic. And who wants the trash of let's just say McDonald's? Who wants it? I, where I live in Forest Grove. We have a uh, an area that's reserved for runoff water because of the road development there. And it's full of trash. It's a disgrace. Welcome to Franklin Township, the sign says. It's trash everywhere. And that's what you're going to get. You're going to cut down trees. Just don't wor hurry on this and let the owners of the properties move on it. Don't get involved in this. There's not enough experience up here for you to make up your minds for the rest of the public here. Hi, I'm Sarah Harrison, 178 Belmont Ave, Malaga, New Jersey. Um, I don't feel the need to beat a dead horse. You know, most of the points that have been made, I already am in agreement with. Um, and they are reminiscent of the same points that I made at the last planning meeting for those who were present. Um, you know, I've worked closely with at least three of you through my work with the Unity Advisory Committee, and I have a very uh, a mutual respect for all of you. Um, I would uh, definitely implore you guys to please reject this um, for the sake of the uh, residents in in my neighborhood um, and our quality of life. And um, you know, I hope that the points that have been made tonight by the previous speakers have been heard because um, they're all the same points that I would be making myself. Um, Thank you for your time and thank you for your consideration. Thank you. 
Hi. Uh, Maggie McCool. I'm on Aura Willow Grove Road, uh, and I have land in both counties and townships. And my family's been here since, I would say, the 20s or 30s, um, and in Franklin Township. And I, I just want to echo what other folks have said. Um, some of the things that concern me as I'm listening to this process are that, you know, if I wanted to build a, to start a business, to build something different on my land, I'd have to have a, an idea or a plan first, then I would ask for uh, zoning variants or something like that. So someone has an idea of what's gonna happen here. And if that's not being communicated, as it seems that that's what pe people are saying, then that's an issue. Um, you know, everyone deserves to know what is going on. And I also just kind of wanted to, you know, mention <laughs> that um, the, the natural setting that people are talking about, you know, the state has been through a lot of changes and this area breathes for a lot of the state and a lot of the region more generally. And that's the trees and that's the waterways. And we really do need to regard that. Um, and you know if if we're not making choices that value the land where the people live then we're not making choices that value the people and if we're taking walks in this township and finding more trash than we are wildlife that already that's how it already is you know that's a concern that's something that makes it so that my kids are moving away to other states where there's a little bit more you know consideration of these factors um and in terms of like you know the statement was made we're not doing anything a study was done someone asked for a study to be done these things don't occur for no reason in a vacuum it's not like it's sprinkled down you know like a study occurred someone asked for it to be done someone has an idea of what's going to go on there i'm sure there's some sort of you know hopeful you know we can solicit business we can do this we can do that um, those are all good things. Business, of course, is, you know, something that every township or every municipality would like to have more of. We need more of the right kinds. Um, yeah, the, the Dollar Generals, they don't look so good. Have you ever, like, been to another country where um, these kinds of considerations, the, the nature, the people's well-being and welfare, greenways, play spaces, bike trails, where those things are valued? You have industry, you have business, but they look good. And there are regulations on those businesses so that that water runoff from a warehouse isn't like as overwhelming, you know? And I don't think that this township has measures in place to make sure that every single construction project is safe for everyone. And that's where the experience comes in, not just of new members, but I don't know that this township has experience with making plans on that scale in something that's that w an area that's that wet and that impacts so many other people <coughs> to do it the right way so just wanted to say that thank you, thank you. Thank you. hi my name is alex baldacero 356 elmwood avenue malaga um so i've heard a lot about ulterior motive alternative ulterior motives yes thank you um but i just want to say i don't think there's going to be a warehouse that goes up with the plaque franklin township on it right like it's it's a privately done thing like nobody here is going to be involved in what happens all we're trying to do well, all you're trying to do is just see if something's possible right i mean I heard at the planning board of a resident coming up and it got some support about what they said. I don't remember who that they'd rather pay higher taxes than to see this town ruined. Well, I hope to have 70 more years in this town and I'd like to not pay higher taxes. So as somebody younger who wants to live here for their whole lives, I think paying less taxes as a resident would be beneficial for me personally so i've i haven't heard a single pro this in listening to the planning board meetings and these meetings but i just want to say that they're out there um 
As for the diesel trucks, I don't know how many people are aware of RLS, but they come down my road all the time. They make the wrong turn. I live on a dead end street, so I hear them all the time. You just you get used to it. I hate to say it, but you just get used to it. The train goes right past my house. The train goes past my house. I don't wake up at night. I sleep right through it. It's just something you have to live with when infrastructure comes to your town. I mean, we, we can't just live alone with walls built up around us. I mean, eventually something has to give. And I, I just hope that we don't get scared of, of all of the negative words that come. And I hope that we're able to do something positive with it. Um, so that's all. Um, I hope other people hear this and are willing to come up with something positive to say. Thank, Thank you. you. Make a motion to close the second public portion. Make a motion to close the second public portion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Committee reports. Tim? Uh, Public Works are wrapping up needs hopefully next week. Possibly if the weather stays good, not so great. So those guys worked some overtime and really uh, stepped it up. But the amount of guys they had, they got a lot of work done. So it's going to be better. Thanks, Dan. Heather? Uh, my, most of my meetings are next week. Perfect. And the end of this week. Communication starting tomorrow. John? Uh, EDC met last week and uh, reappointed Mr. Maffa. I will say that there was no discussion on um, this redevelopment zone to bring in potential businesses. There hasn't been any economic development committee discussion on any potential businesses for the redevelopment zone property at the EDC meeting. And my meetings are starting next month. Uh, I did attend a historical meeting, which is pretty interesting. It's also doing things that in the town that 100 to years old, pretty new, but and I will get my next meeting started next month. Thank you. Rick is starting to work on the golf thing, too. Yeah, the meeting is in the golf club. Matt, what was yesterday? National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. I appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank all the National Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. Thank you for what you guys do. Thank you, sir. Um, Appreciate all the comments, even the ones that basically say I'm going to take. <laughs> doesn't bother me one bit. Um, I put my head on the pillow at night time and I go right to sleep. Just so you all know that. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay. You should be. Um, other than that, I do appreciate, you know, and the committee appreciates, and I'm sure John and Mike appreciate being part of the process you know hearing what the people have to say yeah don't always assume it's a done deal until it's a done deal you know we're going to allow the planning board to do what they're we're, we're tasked to do and that is to look it over and say yay or nay or change this or change that so until that happens this is a long this is a very very long process so you know, do appreciate coming out, and, and everyone appreciates hearing your comments. Well, why are we waiting? Can we plant a bunch of trees then, so we can grow a little bit? You can do whatever you want. <laughs> That's not my property. You said it was somebody else's. That's Fazio's property. Exactly. You can go plant the trees. Go ahead. I'll go talk with them. Go ahead. Let's yeah. see if I get the same results. I mean, it, I, this is just comments for oh, us. Yeah. You said it's just the planning board's decision. So planning board to get it back to the township committee. Right. So if there's changes, you were at the meeting bar. Yes. They explained it a couple of times. They they can come back and say this out, this out, this out. This, you know, there's a lot of things that they can do. Okay, but why was John Civic the chairperson of the environmental committee? I'm not going to talk about that right now. You should have asked that when you were up here. Well, your arrogance is stale. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. arrogance. Your arrogance. Yeah. Okay. Well, well listen. listen. No. She uh, had the opportunity to ask that. She couldn't ask, ask the question. Well, she is one of the people that may or may not have the way. You are a service. It's not public. That's what I mean. It's not. Oh, it's the end? It's the I can't end. ask the question. You had public questions. Oh, my. Excuse me. Yeah, my only thought is that something that's going to be 24 hours a day, trucks, please think about that. 
Yeah, if it was a business that was only open normal business hours and was closed on Sundays, it would be less damaging to the community. So if warehouse is, is the end goal, please, 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 don't inflict that on the health of the residents. With that said, I get a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks for coming out.